So I'm Stephen Griffin and I am the president of uh, Cirrus Undervascular. Now if I remember correctly, last year when we interviewed you, you had just been named president. That is correct. And, and what's been happening since, because that was a pretty uh, important move. Yes it was, it was a big role to step into. Um, the first order of business obviously was to assess where we were and make sure that we focused our energies uh, that would deliver the most results to the business and so for me it was really looking at our clinical and our regulatory strategy mm -hmm. um, for and executing successfully on that over the course of the year. Um, so in this past year we have executed on a uh, the pilot closure of our pilot study, mm -hmm. initiation of another uh, clinical study in Europe that we have involved a number of other countries um, and physicians and operators new operators um, and obviously it's been invaluable for us to get more and more uh, feedback on our product and how it compares mm -hmm. to, uh, to other technologies in this particular class. It's a slow process getting to this takeoff point, doesn't it? Always slow, mm -hmm. but then it's like it builds momentum and it, it grows exponentially as more physicians have an opportunity to use the device. Um, and the, you know, the word of mouth spreads and then more physicians want to use it. So it's, it's a very exciting time. Can you say a little about the specificity that, of this device that you're working with? So the device is designed, it's a, so it's a single use, one and done device that sits inside of the neck of the aneurysm. And basically what it does is it diverts flow away from the aneurysm sac and causes the um, thrombosis to establish inside and ultimately healing and isolation of the aneurysm sac from the parent vessel. And so th this is now in the final stages of, of testing? And where, yeah, we're, we're, well we're through all of our device testing. We, um, we have probably treated upwards of 70 patients now. Uh, we are seeking a CE mark approval and we anticipate that we will have it very, very soon. And that will allow us then, obviously, to uh, commercialize the product in Europe and have access to a broader market. And it's clear that when, when you've been able to commercialize it, it's when it starts being used in many centers by many physicians that yes. it can evolve further. What, what, are the, those, what do you see as the evolution in the upcoming months? In the upcoming months, the evolution, it's really not evolution in terms of the design, it's evolution, I think, in, in our maturing in the marketplace and being present in many cath labs across the country, uh, or across Europe. Um, and I think that as more physicians have an opportunity to use it, they find techniques, they find the unique situations where the device will work, maybe where we didn't appreciate. Uh, and I think that, just like any other device, um, once it's in the hands of the physician, it's on their shelf, they have an opportunity to use it in various different situations. And I think we will learn more. But we partner very closely with our physicians and we have worked very closely with them from the very, very beginning. Our job as a company is to provide the tools to do the job properly. The physicians are the operators, they do the job. So they tell us, it's like a carpenter. You know, I, 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 I'm not a good carpenter, but I can design a hammer. The physician will tell me what kind of hammer, what features they want the hammer to, to do, to perform, and it's our job to deliver that. Moving forward this year, I see obviously will be the commercial rollout of our, our contour. Um, we have almost completed our second study enrollment in Europe for the contour device. So the, um, that is going really, really well. Uh, I expect within the coming weeks we'll have closed that study. Um, we are initiating another study for a second device and this second device is a hybrid, if you like, of the device here behind me. The, it has a, less, a lower mesh density. It's an intrasacular stent. Oh. So it works in combination with coils. And obviously every physician, they all have their preferences and some like the one and done approach, others like a combination adjunctive therapies like stents with coils, depending on obviously the anatomy they're treating. So we want to be able to offer a toolkit. We're not, we, we, we recognize there's no silver bullet. And to be successful, we have to be able to offer a number of different solutions. Now what makes the other device, which is Nextent, very unique is that it's an intersacular. So it, it's a stent that sits within the aneurysm. 
and you have the ability to access through that mesh and to deploy coils behind it. And that's, like I said, that, that's one of the biggest differentiators from this. You know, can this device do something that the others do? It's, yes, it's, you'll have those unique situations where one will lend itself better mm -hmm. to a particular situation than another.